He doesn't seem to care about the negatives at all, for instance. So. We offer this form to the sky, the sea, and the earth. Thanks, Rook, for coming. I don't think I could have done this alone. Yeah, you know what, Corey? That's that's a good way to put it. Conflict is what makes stories interesting. In conflict, a group finds itself or it finds itself lacking. DAV denies any conflict. I don't know it's fun to watch, but it's something that PPL pick up on. Yeah. No, I, th I think you're right. I think I think there's a distinct lack of conflict in this game and a real focus on working together and overcoming conflict instead of the more immersive, realistic, no, sometimes shit just sucks and sometimes people are just going to disagree. And I feel like Baldur's Gate did a really good job of that, where you could very easily put yourselves in position in Baldur's Gate where it's just like, yo, me and this, I don't want to be with you anymore. I'm going to leave the party. Like, you could do that. <laughs> This game doesn't do any of that. There's none of that. There's there's nothing there's nothing to overcome in this game because everything's kind of railroaded generally, not all the time, but generally into being the happy ending. Yeah. And and what's even, like like what was the one there was one time I think it was Lucanus and somebody got into an argument and I was legit like, "Oh, I can't wait to see them get in an argument." And then like two lines later, a thing popped up and it's like, Lucanus and I think it was Davern. Lucanus and Davern have overcome their differences. And I was like, no, 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 no. Say something about his mom, slap him, do something. Hit, like kick his puppy. I don't know, just piss him off. Like, ah, it was going somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, I'm with you. We're a team. We stick together, not the puppy, no I know, not the puppy. Still, Maybe the puppy was a bit too far, I but... I appreciate it. You know what I mean. Anyways, we need to light three more braziers. Each one represents an aspect of the self. Oh, Lord. It's been this way for centuries. It's part of who the Dalish are. Maybe the Archive could have told me why before I freed it, <laughs> but it's what I know and what I want. Maybe the Archive could have told me why before I freed it. But your dumbass picked the other option, Rook. Yeah. Yeah, so I can't ask the archive anymore, can I? Because you picked to free it. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure I said that. Okay. Yeah, anyway, let's go back to just guessing because I don't have the archive, Rook. <laughs> Never really been good at funerals. Sorry in advance for crying, which I will definitely do. That's true. Oh, that's okay. I don't mind. Anyways, let's head to the first place. Bulbous, I swear to God. I kept the archive and Valara got Iron Man suit. Okay. No. The first brazier should be ahead somewhere. How far? However far it needs to be, I guess. Okay, I'm going to fight this. I, there, there, are, there are only a select few hills I will die on. But this is, this is one of them right here. Did BG3 spoil us too much in that regard or just set the bar to a new standard? Baldur's Gate 3 set the bar for narrative and character delivery. And arguably, companies like Owlcat are keeping up and in some cases surpassing it. It is not a situation where, it is, where Baldur's Gate 3 is some unattainable goal that devs can't do. I hate hearing that from people. I hate it. Narratively, immersionly, de like delivery-wise, Baldur's Gate 3 is absolutely a bar. It is a bar. It is like, sure, argue everything else about the like mo capping and the resources that went into it and that kind of stuff. Sure. That is something that is completely different. That was Larian being Larian. That was a kind of white whale situation because CRPGs normally don't get those resources. But narratively, the writing, the quality of the writing, there is nothing, nothing unattainable by other companies. Those are decisions companies make. Okay, this the tone of this game was a decision. The basic writing and tutorial style dialogue was a decision. That was not like a weird, unattainable thing Baldur's Gate 3 did. So I, I really don't like when people say that kind of stuff. Like, oh, no, 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 Baldur's Gate 3 was a white whale. Don't expect that. No, we can hold companies like this one. Bioware, of all the companies, Bioware could be hold, held to the standard of 
No, we want immersive, good writing. We do not want phoned in, I wrote this in a high school class writing. We want real immersive dialogue that makes us think, that makes us feel like we can absolutely hold them to that standard. And we should. And we did, according to the sales. So yeah, it's, it's no, that is, that is an argument I will take to the grave. I will die on that hill. <laughs> I will die on that hill. And for the record, I do want to point out, companies are keeping up or in some cases even surpassing Baldur's Gate 3. Owlcat is awesome. If you played Baldur's Gate 3 and you were like, oh, no company ever comes close to this, play Pathfinder Kingmaker, play Wrath of the Righteous, play Rogue Trader. Like, there's phenomenal, immersive, excellent character development in those games. They are goated games that can keep up with that. And there's a lot of other games that do too. Wasteland 3 is fantastic. Um, we've got, apparently this new game, New Arc Line is doing really well and it's voice acted and stuff. So yes, Baldur's Gate 3 showed us that that kind of level of immersion and writing could be mainstream. And we as gamers should absolutely look at every company and be like, you know what? You can do it too. You can give us this awesome immersive narrative experience. You can do it too. Cyberpunk 2.0. Even CDPR did it. Cyberpunk 2.0 writing was phenomenal. It was great. It was good. It was fantastic. So it's like, you know, yeah, no, we can hold companies to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I wonder what we lost. In case I haven't made it abundantly By clear, I, I will die on that hill. <laughs> Besides an <laughs> I wish, opportunity I to be called yes. witless fool a dozen times a day? Definitely not going to miss that. Mm-hmm. What about Solasta? Okay. Solasta writing was good. But Solasta was not a game focused on the writing. I will say that. It Bilal. Solasta's writing was, hey, was, was good. It was not great. It if was you good. Talk, let me know. I don't want <clears throat> our history to make things. But the thing awkward, about Solasta that was so awesome. I'm still your Solasta was amazing because it's one of those, the most truest, real interpretations we've ever seen of Dungeons and Dragons mechanically into a video game. And that is something that's amazing, especially considering that the team that made Solasta is tiny. It was a tiny team. So the gameplay was amazing. It's one of the most fundamentally like honest rule set conversions into gaming. And, and considering that the team that made it, like it was, it was fine, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would I would not put Solasta in the echelon of of amazing writing, um, but it's still a very solid, awesome game. Friend, yep. you know, very tactically Anyways, fun. Time yep. to light the first brazier. JP made the unobtainable argument when you said BG3 in the podcast. So it's important to mention that the stuff I was talking about with BG3 is not the project as a whole. We're talking about the writing. Baldur's Gate 3 is kind of a white whale in the terms of a CRPG of a game of that type. <laughs> getting show. that many resources. That is unique to Baldur's Gate 3. Hopefully we'll see that change in the future. Now that now that people know that Baldur's Gate 3 and that type of game can make a lot of money, hopefully we'll see more companies get that kind of money in the future. Um But you know, to be fair, that is that is the that but that part of it is understandably the white whale. But it's important to separate that from the writing and the stuff that had nothing to do with the resources. Yeah, they, we had that, like that kind of stuff had nothing to do with the resources. That had to do with the direction. That had to do with the team. That had to do with what they decided third, they wanted from their game. We give to the sky to share your story with the sun and moon. Feels a little weird saying that one with everything we know now. It's not the ancient elves' fault that Elgernon is, well, what he is. Did I make the right choice? Freeing the archive? Losing that piece of who we were? It's, it's always so weird to me when the game makes us decide for someone else. Like, we had the option. We decided if she freed the archive or didn't. So then to have her look at us and be like, did we make the right choice? It's like, uh, I mean, I already, I already made the choice. <laughs> like, what do you want me to say? I, yes. 
<laughs> it's very awkward. It's very awkward. Um. I mean, I think the only thing. <laughs> this feels so weird to say because she didn't choose it. I'm gonna. She's expressing to me. Did I make the right choice? When I made the choice, and then I can tell her to live with her choice that I made. Am I gaslighting her? Is this gaslighting? Am I am I actually just some huge abusive asshole? Is that what this is? Am I am I gonna get canceled because of this option? Because I'm I'm gonna come out as some kind of manipulative gaslighting asshole. Is that? Huh? What do I do? I'm gonna let her choose. Not every question has a good answer, but who you are is just as important as who you are. You want to go back on it, whatever. Syrian didn't want our people mm. to be defined by our struggle. He wanted to go back to who we were before. He said that's when we were ourselves all the way through. But that struggle, it happened. It changed us into who we are now. Just wish it were easier to know. A situation like that question that we just had asked would have been far more impactful if the choices we had made up to that quest had decided the outcome that she had chosen. And then we had this conversation. So like the fact that it let us make that decision in one binary option before this makes zero sense. Like that, that just does not fit. That's just, that's, that's lazy. But if like, if they had made it, so there was like this, this weird, like you're molding how the way she thinks, then she makes the decision and then you have to talk about it. It's like, that would have been far more, far more well done, far more engaging. And then this is what made sense. It doesn't make any sense now. If you, if you plot out the points, this conversation makes no sense. So yeah. Okay. Next brazier. Hmm. That's wild. This game needs Ogren. Ogren. Oh, it's Ogren. Wait, wait, wait. I was thinking Ogren from Witcher. Ogren. You're talking about Ogren the Dwarf. That's hard to do. Yes. You I agree. Though, no matter where you come from. Each obstacle is supposed to represent grief and moving past it, literally. But yeah, it's a little weird. Probably. Hey, Zephron, how you doing? Syrian tonight, would have laughed at it. Okay. Coach should join the writing team. The next Dude, the problem is I would did. never, Given I would never want to be on the writing us. team for a game like this. I, I wouldn't even want to be consulted. With any luck, you can say that right. Because I selfishly want to experience it. I, I would like if I, even even if EA contacted me and they were like, we want you to go over everything in Mass Effect Five to make sure it's awesome before release. I would be like, F you. I want to play Mass Effect Five. No, absolutely not. Don't ever talk to me and my son ever again. Um, but that's just because I'm I'm selfish. I I I want to experience all that. Looking forward yeah, to I, it. I, I no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Nev, what are you doing here? What? You know I show up for you, Belle. They'd only let one of us come though. The rest send their regards, especially Emily. I'm just. Wow. Thank you, Nev, and everyone else. Hey, as long as I'm around, you've got family. All right, go on and light the brazier. Sorry, what? Oh, the brazier. Okay. <clears throat> A third we give to the sea to share your story with the heart of the world. We always talked about visiting other lands. Syrian and me, I mean. Maybe the Evanurus did just that. Conquered other people. Shattered them like they did the doors. What would the world look like if they'd left it alone? Well, we've now met three elven gods and one almost god, and honestly, can't say I care much for them. The most... Sammy. Ko is lashing out at the funeral. Why couldn't it have been your hat, Neve? Why did it have to be Syrian? I'm trying to focus. You need to stop that kind of commentary. 
Okay, let's focus on the game, what's happening on the screen. Of the other elves I've met have been pretty okay. At least the ones that aren't gods. I keep trying to remember. The elven were the first people the Evanuris enslaved. They broke us and kept us broken. We survived in spite of them, not because of them. But it's still hard knowing what I know. <sighs> okay, on to the next one. Is that Josh Ray Faye's voicing him? Okay. Uh, voicing Rook? No, that one is Alex Jordan. To go. He is an insanely talented VO who is popping rituals, up everywhere. I mean, Syrian would laugh at me. Well, not in a mean way, and he'd help me. It meant a lot. So why are there mm. people waiting after the obstacles? It's a reminder that on the other side of even the hardest days, people are there for you. I like it. It's literal in a really reassuring way. Yeah, that's a nice thought. Yeah, I have to say, uh, Alex Jordan's VA on the main character, Rook, has not only been like marvelously consistent, but it's one of the reasons, like he, he his voice work has been like an anchor point for me <laughs> throughout the game. It's, it's really well done. trees for their funerals. Yeah. This is what we've always done, that I remember anyway. Well, we didn't use ancient magic before. Bellara, I'm sorry about Syrian. Thanks, Strife. I'm glad you're here. He was one of us, even if he never officially joined. Oh, he no, to, to put it bluntly, like, all of the voice actors have done really well in this game. The, I've had issues with the dialogue and the writing, and specifically what they're saying, but the delivery has been fantastic. The only person I would say that does not good have good delivery to put it bluntly, is Neb. I don't like Neb's delivery. I feel that it's incredibly unemotive. I feel like her reaction is very muted. And I feel like when you compare it to other voices in the game, it sticks out like a sore thumb. However, after the first week of playing this game, I went to check out the voice actor of Neb, the person who does voice acting for her. And if you watch her if you watch the actor she's one of those people that speaks more with her body and face than her voice she is incredibly emotive outside of her voice and the problem is none of that comes through with nev none of it so like it, it it's a it's a weird dichotomy because I, I, I don't like, I like, I like the voice, but it seems unemotive. But then if you watch the actor when she's doing her and delivering her lines, it's totally different than if it's just Nev and her like head slightly moving and mouth opening. So, um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like Nev's performance would have been so much better if they did mocapping because the actor is really good at doing that. Yeah. But to be clear, like, like, even with that, like all the voice work in this game has still been really good. It's it's none of it has has really stuck out as as not by protecting Arlathan, which is I mean impressive for how many voices are on the game. Saving the world, the delivery Seems is always like good. it might run in the family. Time to light the last brazier. Really, I be Sammy? No kidding. It's crazy because Lucanus gets really fine-tuned micro-emotions, especially in your romance, but Neve's face still looks kind of flat, too. Yeah, it's, dude, ne Nev's face is always flat. Not like sometimes. It, it, I've been looking for it. It's, it's never, it's, ne it never really syncs up with, you can tell, the performance that is being given. Mayshar, that's, that's a good point. I mean, maybe so. Maybe so. And a third returns to the soil to blossom once again into life. And that's it. A Dalish funeral, or one version, at least. It hasn't changed much in centuries from and to the earth. Huh. I think Syrian would have appreciated it. There's a good reason it stayed constant for so long. Rituals help. 
You know, I thought I'd be sadder, but I'm okay. I can't look at her and not see like the lady Statue of Liberty thing going on. Weird. Mostly. <clears throat> it hurts, but a little bit less every day. Freeing the archive? Was it the right choice? Does it mean Syrian died for nothing? Well, you sent Anaris back to whatever nightmare he came from. <laughs> That's not nothing. I'm so sorry, That's Lee. That's a really good point. That's my bad, he buddy. He wanted to reclaim our past, find the truth of who we were. He never got that, never found out what he wanted. But he did the right thing. And I got to say goodbye. That's worth something, right? Now I have to live my life for him, for me, and for our people. Okay. They aren't your problem to solve. You need to live for yourself. That's true. There's still lots to do, to change. Not to mention, you know, rampaging evil gods. We'll figure out who we were, who we are, and we'll do it the right way. It's time we let the ghosts of the past rest. I hope, I hope you've found peace and that we'll meet again. Goodbye, Syrian. I love you. I have not always been a fan of her dialogue, but Bellara's VO does such a great job of delivering it. Yeah, she's, ever since her first quest dealing with that, she's been really good with it. Yeah. Art Boyo, I mean, he's not, he's not wrong. Yeah. Like, I, there's different ways to say that, but what he said is not wrong. <laughs> I've wondered something. Let's look at Emmerich's Pardon? stuff real quick. <clears throat> My the voice acting in this game is a letdown so hard by the poor writing, says Leprechaun. Well, I, I, again, I think, I, I think the different, more positive way to look at it is the voice acting in a lot of times carries the not so well written dialogue. And I think that's true, especially Alex Jordan. Brooks' character, there's been many times when, like, his delivery has made the lines. In my opinion. Yeah. Ooh. All of Emmerich's abilities apply necrosis when dealing damage. The party's affliction damage is increased by 25%. Uh, not bad. That's not terrible. What's the other skill we, we don't really use when else from him? Okay. Do we have a revive charge on him? Where is the revive charge? Oh, is that here? Oh, dude. No, we need that. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Okay. Who lifespan be extended? Uh, what is this? Driven crossroads. Let's go here. Hmm. We got some new quests here. Is that near? Uh, is that an imperial aquila tea? The emperor protects. Yes, it is. It's a rogue trader T-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I love Rogue Trader. One of my favorite games in recent memory. A phenomenal, phenomenal game. What is this? Lumpy says, I just got a Hypercube artifact in Stalker 2. I don't know what that means, but it sounds hot. Congrats, I think. I see our targets. Costing plenty. There. 
Making the rest of us look bad, Grug. How do we get into this quest? Is it up here? Maybe? We've got like An excellent hit, bro! with steel splinters flying as they kick in the door to our home okay i've wondered something harding might your lifespan be extended bound to the titans as you now are uh, I don't know. Well, if it's true, and you find yourself wondering about the years ahead, I was hoping... <gasps> Since you're a lich, we'd be friends forever! I'd like that very much. That is... Like, literally what I feel like 13-year-old girls would say to sleepover. But... It's adorable. So... Okay. <clears throat> okay. Oh god, I'm dead. I died. I died right there. I'm dead. Right here. Will Ford Brook. I'm there. I've set that one up. Not quite yet. Come on, Ford Brook. Nice one. Bam. Baking Thanks, in full metal. Armor. Appreciate it, man. So much hotter here than back in Ferelden. Kill on sight. But they don't look like abominations. They just look sad. Well, that's kind of depressing. Hmm. Oh. This is happening. We've company. Damn. Who is this dude? I'll need a moment. Give me a second. 
Recycle ready. Boom. Wait, maybe not boom. Boom. There it goes. Ow. Ranged incoming. Ow. Do we loot? Hmm. No. We ran, but they chased us. We tried to surrender, but they killed us as we knelt. The spirits roar as the fire comes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The wood will always be scorched, but the rain has washed away the fire and smoke. Thank you. Oh, Lords of Fortune. Okay. Done and done. And we will do more tomorrow. Guys, another two and a half hours of DAV in the books. Been good. Got through some uh, some big stuff. Making our way towards the end of the game. And frankly, I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see what this game has to offer. I'm, I'm excited to see what the big finale is. And uh, I'm hoping it will be a nice bookend to our dragon age experience so yeah we'll see anyway tomorrow morning more stalker tomorrow afternoon uh we've got some naraka and i think the pc gamer show so it should be fun and then probably more of this tomorrow night so hope to see you there for it should be a good time and as always thank you so much for being here have a great morning afternoon or evening wherever you are around the globe and an excellent rest of your night have a good one bye-bye